Humans have always changed their environment, and we've reacted to that. It's the story of our whole history. The thing that's different is that the scale of our impacts today, multiplied by our numbers, is on the scale of the natural processes that maintain the biosphere. And we really have to address that problem by scaling back. Like all other governments, I think they have to recognize this is a global problem that requires global cooperation. That does not mean everybody doing the same thing. It means in equitable proportions. All governments pitching in and sharing the responsibility. First, we have to recognize it's everyone's problem. And indeed, there are some countries that are going to be winners from, for example, climate change. But by and large, the biggest losers are going to be in the developing world. And we need to recognize that most of what has been put up in terms of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere has been done by the developed world. So the developed world has more of an obligation to be shouldering most of the present burden. But we all need to be contributing in equitable proportions. Both. There are some things like tightening building regulations to build houses that have all today's amenities with less than half the energy consumption. Deal with that by regulation. There are other things that should be incentivizing business and providing opportunity for trading in carbon, for example, that incentivize people doing things to address the problem. Not an either or. Better businesses, like for example BP under John Brown, recognized that the future is going to be different and the market leaders of tomorrow are going to be the people who recognize most clearly that tomorrow is not going to be the same as today. Two different questions there. Firstly, all unproven technologies are uncertain. But that's how we got where we are with all the good things that have happened along with the bad. Secondly, Carbon dioxide in big enough quantity is itself a poison. So there are worries that just as we worry about the security of disposal of radioactive waste, which is a problem but not an insuperable one, so too we need to worry about the problems of security of disposal of CO2. The rather odd thing is that 30 years ago, we were talking about population growth, but not about climate change. Today, we're talking about climate change, not population growth. We've got to talk about both. It's not simply true that the prosperous world is where you're seeing population growth addressed. Interestingly, we are today at the point where the average woman on the globe is having only one female child. We're still committed by the momentum of population growth to see population increase another 50%. But within the developing world, there are huge differences where some countries, not in a coercive way, but with cultural sensitivities, have empowered women and given them the ability, made available control over reproductive choices. Other countries have done absolutely nothing or even opposed it. And you see fascinating patterns. When India was partitioned, Bangladesh and Pakistan originally, Bangladesh had about five million more people than Pakistan. They have had three decades of culturally sensitive, information rich, resource rich empowerment of women. Pakistan's done nothing. By the middle of this century, Pakistan will have 60 million more people than Bangladesh. So it's not first world 
third world. It's not develop, developing. It's the governments within the developing world and in many countries in the developing world. They're models that act better than we do. That is a hugely important question and you're absolutely right that that's a big part of the problem. We have no, we have little evolutionary experience of acting on behalf of a distant future and the more distant the future the more we discount it. That is a huge problem. Just as for tobacco there are a handful of people for various reasons who still don't believe it has anything to do with lung cancer and there's a curious travelling circus that believes that HIV doesn't cause AIDS. So too there will always be a bunch of small diminishing bunch of contrarians. But the fact is, as emphasized by the world's academies in a joint statement not long ago, there is no longer, there are doubts about some of the details of the time scales and some of the speed of some of the processes. But overall, there is no doubt that climate change is real. It's human created largely, and it's deeply serious.